Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at some more polynomial work. You might want to check out my other video on dividing polynomials first, but if you've already seen that or you know how to do it, then great, stay with me. We're going to look at the factor and the remainder theorem. Now I'm going to look at six questions today. Most of them will be exam style questions. So as usual, grab a pen and paper, pause the video whenever you need to and have a go yourself. I hope you have fun. Let's get started. Okay, I want to start with the remainder theorem because the factor theorem is actually a specialised case of the remainder theorem. So here's the remainder theorem. Do write it down if you need to, if you don't have a note of it somewhere else. It might look a little bit abstract at the moment but will hopefully make more sense when we do some examples. The idea is really that you don't need to do a big long algebraic division to use a remainder theorem. It's a quick way of finding a remainder. So when a polynomial is divided by a linear factor, you just plug in the number from the linear factor into that polynomial and it will spit out the remainder without having to do much work. Let's look at the first question as an example. Okay, this question is asking us to find the remainder when it's divided by a linear factor of x minus 2. If you've seen my other video on dividing polynomials, you might be tempted to do the whole dividing process here to get that. That will work, but it, will, it might lose you marks because they want to see that you can use the remainder theorem, which is a lot quicker and it won't actually be worth many marks. It will probably be a couple of marks, if that. Using the remainder theorem, we can do this very quickly. When you divide by x minus a, the remainder is given by f of a. So in this case, we're dividing by x minus 2. a, then, is clearly 2. So to find f of 2, we're actually plugging 2 in as x. x is being replaced with 2. Now you're not given a calculator in core 1, so you will have to do some arithmetic here. And that's the answer, the remainder is 5. So it's actually really easy once you know what you're doing. Let's have a look at another question. Okay, so very similar to the first question. This time we're plugging in the number from the linear factor. Now, the linear factor is x plus 1. Comparing that to x minus a, a will actually have to be minus 1, so you do have to remember to change the sign. So if you're dividing by x plus 1, you need to put x is minus 1 into the polynomial. OK, let's now look at a question that has a slightly different format. OK, as usual, do please pause the video if you want to have a go at this on your own and come back. This one's slightly different because instead of asking to find the remainder, we're given the remainder, given the linear factor, but we don't know one of the coefficients in the polynomial. But we can set it up as usual. We're dividing by x plus 2, so we're going to put in minus 2, and we know the remainder, so what we get there is actually 10. Let's put minus 2 into that polynomial then. Okay, well done if you've got that one right. That one is a little bit more like when you're getting an exam. So do you remember how we did that? Now let's look at the factor theorem. Okay, as I've said before, this is a specific case of the remainder theorem. If you're dividing by a linear factor, if that is a factor, the remainder will be zero. 
which is why if you put in that number, you should get zero instead of a different number as a remainder. So let's look at three questions using the factor theorem. Okay, to show that x minus 3 is a factor, we need to put in to the polynomial as usual. It was x minus 3, so we're going to put in 3, changing the sign. And because it's a factor, or we're showing that it's a factor, we should get 0. Let's have a go. Okay, so because we get zero, it is a factor, and it's nice to write a little sentence at the end there just to show you know what you're talking about. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier. It's more like an exam question again. We're going to use the remainder and the factor theorem. We're going to use each to get an equation, so we'll get two equations for two unknowns. Then we'll solve them simultaneously to find P and Q. Let's use the information first for the remainder theorem. We're dividing by x plus 2, so we're going to put minus 2 into the polynomial. And the remainder there is minus 21. So that's that information. Now the factor theorem, we're dividing by x minus 1, so we'll put in 1. And because it's a factor, there's no remainder, so it's 0. That's the information we've been given. We can now write those as equations if we put minus 2 into this polynomial. Okay, that's our first equation. I'm going to do the same thing now, putting 1 in to this polynomial to get the second equation. Okay, two simultaneous equations. Solve them any way you please. Do pause the video and come back and compare your answers. I'm going to use the elimination method and do equation 1, take away equation 2. Okay, very well done if you followed that and got it right. That was quite difficult arithmetic in that one. Lots of room for mistakes, loads of places where you can make mistakes with the minus signs or just counting wrong. So be really, really careful when you do this. Go slowly and methodically and you'll be fine. Okay, last question. This is another common exam style question. We're asked to factorise it completely. We want to, because it's a cubic, it will go into three different brackets. We're going to find the first linear factor. Sometimes they give that to you, actually. But just to make it harder here, I haven't given it to you. So you'll have to use trial and error to find it. So to find a linear factor, using the factor theorem, we just plug in numbers and see what gives us zero. We can use 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, 3 minus 3 until we hit on one that gives 0. As a general rule of thumb, only use numbers that go into the last number there. So you wouldn't use 4 or 5, just 1, 2 or 3. Start with 1 and minus 1. I'll have you go with 1 first of all. Okay, that one doesn't work. That doesn't give us 0. We'll try minus 1. No, just looking at that one, that's not going to work either. We'll try two. That one I can see is just going to be too big. These numbers are really high. We're only taking off six. That's not going to work. And we'll try minus two. Fantastic. We found one that works. So minus two gives us zero. So the factor is x plus 2.
Okay, so we found the linear factor. To make a cubic, there'll also be a quadratic that that multiplies by to give the cubic. Now, we want to find what that times is by to give that. So in other words, if we do that divided by that, we'll get the quadratic part. So now this is the place where you'll do your dividing polynomials. And if you haven't seen my other video, do flip back, have a look, or do your dividing polynomials whichever way you know how. I'm going to use the grid method, do it your way, come back and have a look. Okay, I hope you've got that whichever method you used. So now we know that f of x is made up of a linear factor x plus 2 and a quadratic factor 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Now the question was to factorise this completely so we're not quite finished. We also need to factorise that quadratic into two linears. Okay, I used my method here of factorising quadratics. I realise again this might be a different method to what you're used to. I do have another video on that if you want to take a look. Otherwise, whichever way works for you as long as you get this answer. And that's the polynomial fully factorised. That's a really difficult question worth quite a few marks using a lot of different techniques. So well done if you got that right. Keep practising and thank you so much for watching. Have fun.